Hello, my name is Adam Golinski, and I'm going to present COIN, Compression with Implicit Neural Representations. In this work, we propose a new simple method for image compression using neural networks. Instead of storing the RGB values for each pixel of an image, we store the weights of a neural network overfitted to the image. The neural network with weights theta maps the pixel locations x, y to RGB values at the corresponding locations on the image. Let's denote i, x, y as the RGB values in the image and f theta, x, y as the output of the neural network. To encode an image, we optimize the weights theta to minimize the mean squared error between a compressed reconstruction of the image and the original image. However, it is difficult to reach a good performance in this task with an arbitrary neural network architecture. Luckily, recently it has been shown that using sinusoidal activation function combined with a multilayer perceptron leads to a significant improved performance improvement. This architecture is often referred to as silent, and that is the one we use in our work. After training, we reduce the precision of the weights from 32 to 16 bits and store them as compressed representation of the image. To decode the image, we simply load the parameters of the network and evaluate it for every pixel location, which yields a reconstruction of the image. We evaluate our approach on the common Kodak dataset. We found that at low bit rates, our approach outperforms JPEG despite not using any form of entropy coding. Let's have a closer look at the reconstruction quality at these two bit rates. At 0.15 dpp, our method outperforms JPEG, which can be clearly seen on the residual plots on the right hand side. The residuals for JPEG are much larger. At 0.3 dpp, now on the right hand side, the two methods perform approximately on par. Let's zoom in onto the highlighted ones. We can see that COIN introduces smudgy impressionist-like artifacts, qualitatively different from the blocky artifacts introduced by JPEG. Going back to the results, although our method outperforms JPEG in the low bitrate regime, it is not yet competitive with the state-of-the-art compression methods, either the traditional ones like DTM or the learned ones like the recently proposed method by Cheng et al. Now, let's talk about encoding. This is the encoding optimization curve for one of the images in the codec dataset. One weakness of our method is that the encoding is rather slow due to the per instance optimization procedure, which at the moment is performed from scratch for every image. We are currently working on improving the encoding time by using a meta-learning approach, as well as the empirical performance using entropy coding and more effective uh, architecture choices. On the bright side, our method has a few advantages that make it particularly suitable for deployment on edge devices. Firstly, since we are communicating the image as a weights of the neural network, we strive to make the model itself as small as possible. In comparison to other learned compression methods, COIN results in model sizes orders of magnitude smaller, which allows it to be used even on the most severely memory limited devices. Secondly, our method allows for progressive decoding. Normally, we would decode an image by evaluating the neural network on a tensor of every pixel location for a given resolution. This process is, an, is embarrassingly parallel, and so if we have access to a GPU, this can be performed very quickly. However, if we are considering memory-constrained or compute-constrained devices, which cannot perform such massively parallel computation, then we might want to consider progressive decoding. Instead of decoding pixels one by one in the raster scan order, we can first decode a lower resolution image, thus providing a more responsive experience to the user. Let's say that first we decode only 16, every 16th pixel in the image. This yields a much smaller number of required function evaluations and allows us to obtain a low resolution version of the image almost immediately that we can display to the user, hence providing a, a responsive experience. Then we can refine the reconstruction by progressively evaluating the missing pixel values every eighth every fourth, every second, until we obtain a full resolution reconstruction. Such a procedure is not easily possible for the popular convolutional autoencoder-based architectures. Last but not least, our method could be extended to compress audio, video, and other data modalities. Thank you for listening, and please come talk to us at the postdoc.